Breaking up the monolith like a boss. That should be a sexy title. So first of all, why would you want to break up the monolith? And of course, there are many good reasons to do that. First of all, a lot of software systems that are in production right now require modernization. They've grown over many years and they became harder and harder to maintain, harder and harder to test and harder and harder to understand because many of them turn out to um, basically end up with this dreaded big ball of mud. And of course, if you can uh, restructure that monolith and, and form it into a monolith, that might be a big, big advantage because now it becomes maintainable, testable, and um, comprehensible. Of course, now many people fly to microservices because that is the newest modern thing to do. I can just give a warning here. It's a risky thing. I've seen many, many companies doing just that and 80% of them ending up in a world of pain. It's not easy to get microservices right. So you really need to know what you're doing. And if you know what you're doing and have the skill people who are able to, to perform on that strategy, it might be beneficial for certain use cases. But I think uh, right now everybody seems to think that every application should be split up into microservices and that's not a good idea. In most cases, it really, if you just cut a big ball of mud into a distributed big ball of mud, you just have more pain than you had before. It's not really working. And it can be a great solution, and but you have to keep in mind not everybody is Google or Netflix. Yeah, most of the time you don't need that kind of scalability. Yeah, and uh, right now, um, Aimless Plug Sonograph, in my opinion, is currently the best tool available for this task. We we put a lot of work in making this breaking up of software a little easier. So, what are the problems to solve when you try to break up your monolith? I think uh, one of the major problems we see in many, many systems is that you have a lot of circular dependencies. Like you, you remember that package dependency graph from Apache Cassandra, that's um, on the left side, you see just uh, a cyclic package group of about 50 Java packages that all refer to each other in a cyclical way. On the right side, you see the package dependency graph of all the packages. And um, this is our exploration view. So the arcs are going counterclockwise. The arcs on the left side are going top down. The arcs on the right side are going bottom up. So now graph tries to sort the elements in a way that the number of upgoing dependencies is minimized. Uh, so if you have a cycle free structure, you won't see anything on the right side. The greener the right side becomes, the more problems you have, the more circular dependencies you definitely have in your system. That's also a Pachika somewhere, by the way, on the right side. So how do you do that? How do you get to break up your, your, your monolith? I think the first thing you need to do is to break up the big cycle groups into more manageable parts that do not spend more than one domain or functionality. That's the issue here, that many of those cycle groups spend, many, spend a lot of different functionalities and domains, and that needs to be broken up. If you want to break up, it's always the best idea to break up by functionality and domain. So basically, you can take a lot of lessons from domain-driven design. That is what I highly recommend all the time. Design your system by functionality and not by technical aspects. Technical aspects are coming after domain. So first divide by domain and then by layer. That would be a good thing. So for example, if you use namespace naming convention, you could say, come hello tomorrow, then the domain, that would be order management, and then the layer controller. Could be a good uh, idea to name your packages and namespaces. And then another thing that makes things complicated, if you want to extract some fun functionality uh, into some new kind of module or even microservices, you need to consider transitive dependencies. Not only directly outgoing dependencies, also indirect dependencies must be considered. And that is often really hard to do. And the modern IDEs don't give you a lot of, a lot of support with that. Yeah, so to, since we're talking a lot about cycle groups, here's a little graphic that explains you what a cycle group is. We have in that little dependency graph, the circles are Java files or C-sharp files or whatever. The arrows are dependencies between them, and we have two cycle groups here, the red one and the gray one. The white nodes are not involved in any cyclical dependencies. There's actually a brand new, relatively new article from um, 
Carnegie Mellon Software Engineering Institute about how to break up uh, an application to microservices. And that article I just learned yesterday is actually recommending Sonograph for the task. And it's a very good article. So if you're really going down the microservices route, road, you should really read that article. Now let's go to Sonograph and play a little bit around with uh, how we can do a breakup. So here opened uh, Sonograph on Sonograph. So you see a part of Sonograph here. And um, what we have here is our so-called architectural view. The architectural view on the top level shows all the modules of Sonograph and of course the external code. And this view already gives us a couple of hints. So the dividing lines basically represent levelization. Everything on the bottom part has no outgoing dependencies and the next two only depend on external. The next three depend on those two and external and so on. So every cycle free graph can be levelized and the levelization basically is represented by those divider lines. Also, when you look at the plus signs, you see they have different colors. Some are darker, some are brighter. The darker they are, the more classes you will find behind that thing. So it gives you a little bit of a hint how big that part might be. Now, and of course, you can always uh, go deeper. And again, on each level, we do a new, new levelization. And we can go deeper and deeper and so on, I think. Yeah. So <clears throat> when we want to break up, um, you basically want to create containers for the different target uh, breakup parts that you have. So you have to decide what are my target artifacts that I want to break up into. And here I'm going to make a simple example. I assume that all the modules that we see here stay the same. So we keep the modules, but we want to break up our biggest module core into two smaller modules so that we can use them more independently from each other. So that's our little demo here. And what I do as a first step, I'm going to create architectural artifact containers out of this. So I'm going to select all of them and then create new multiple artifacts for elements. And I make them relaxed layers. Relaxed layers means the elements on the top can talk to all elements beneath them. Strict layer would mean I can just go one layer down and nothing more. Restricted would mean everything is forbidden and you have to explicitly allow outgoing dependencies. And unrestricted, as the name says, well, you can do whatever you want. So you see the view changed a little bit. Now, the divider lines disappeared because for those artifacts, the order is important and the human can change the order. Before the order was determined by the dependencies, but now as a human, I could just say, oh, let me move that up here. And then I will change the order here. Yeah. And the order is significant because, as I said, a relaxed layer can talk to anything beneath it. And we can also break our structure a little bit. If I would, for example, if I move core up here, you see you get becoming these red lines here, because now suddenly we have upgoing dependencies in a relaxed layering scheme, you can't have any upgoing dependencies. Okay, let's move it back where it was. Now let's go down into core. Now let's assume we wanna basically isolate a couple classes from this command uh, slice here. And I have two classes in mind. Uh, command and command registry are the classes that I want to extract into a new module. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new artifact and call that artifact command. And I'm going to put it under core. So core should be able to use command and other people, of course, too. But command shouldn't be able to use core. So I have an empty artifact now. And now the magic trick happens. Watch it. So that's like a card trick here, what I'm doing now. Watch very closely. I'm selecting those two classes. And now I'm saying set focus. And I'm setting a focus on outgoing dependencies transitively. It means at the end, I'm only going to see those two classes and all outgoing dependencies from them, not only directly, but also 
indirectly, that means transitively. You see the view changed now. Most of the modules disappeared. And we can only see the direct and indirect outgoing dependencies from those two classes here. You see those little triangles on the top? It means we only have partial information here. We don't see everything. Same is true for here and here. And now I'm simply going to say, talk to this package here and say, uh, move element. I'm moving it to the command thing. And here the decisive thing is up here based on shown children only or all children. Shown children, that's that's what we want to do. We only want to want to move the children that are in our focus right now, not everything. OK, now that is done. Suddenly, you see suddenly the everything, the core module disappeared. Um, the command layer here doesn't have any triangle over it because it contains everything what's in it. And if I clear the focus, I can see everything again. And suddenly, you just look at those two here. Isn't this working like a one, two? You see there's a dependency going from core to command, but not the other way around. So that, that was pretty simple. Now, of course, you might want to know what do I have to move? Well, how do I know how to how do I implement that at the end? And then I can just create an our architecture DSL right out of this model here. Create a new architecture DSL model, call it demo breakup. And now it created Sonograph Architecture DSL in the file demo breakup. If I can find it, there it is. And if you look down here, it gets a little bit more messy because now we have to list packages and classes properly. So the core lists everything that's still in core. And in command, we see everything that has been moved over. So that should, um, the cool thing is in this architecture, you can, in principle, you can really completely simulate that breakup. And if you have certain dependencies in here, you can also refactor those dependencies. Basically, if I look at a dependency, this is something I don't want to have. I can say delete dependencies and we do a sim, we behave like this dependency wouldn't be there anymore. And it adds up also in our to-do list of things we need to do for the breakup. So you can really work in this view and basically create the target structure that you want to have and then drag and drop the classes uh, to the target elements or use a focus like we used before to re really create the desired structure. And in the end, you have a pretty much um, made out to-do list of the things you need to do to make it happen. OK, any questions about that? That is such a cool tool. So uh, that is really interesting how that's done. Because uh, one of the things I was thinking about was how did that impact on what you were talking about yesterday in terms of this architectural description language and the way in which that could be uh, you know, viewed. Mm -hmm. And you answered that. I thought that that's really amazing. Yeah, I think it, it really is also, it allows it to play around as a sandbox. And you can even have multiple different versions. You can try different target architectures and see uh, how easy it is to get there. So it will yeah. also give you a pretty good idea how much work it will be to break up your monolith. Yeah. OK, so we already talked about the services. Just for the recording, I'm re uh, repeating it. So we offer turnkey solutions for quality enforcement and architecture enforcement based on Sonograph. We do software assessment services. So if you have a software system that's not doing well, you want to know how bad it is, we can um, offer you pretty efficient and quick services. We usually take two or three days for a complete assessment. We also offer developer trainings with focus on architecture and quality. We have a very nice one-day training course that really goes into the fundamentals of um, architecture. Also things about how to avoid cyclical dependencies, how to break them up, and so on. 
And we're also your sparing partner when it comes to software modernization and breakup support. Next steps would be, um, you could actually request a demo with me so that um, we can do an in-depth demo and look at more of the features of Sonograph where we have more than 20 minutes. And we can, in that demo, also look at your own project. So it might be quite interesting. Of course, you can test the tool for free and um, we can also discuss potential services. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you very much for your attention.